Sorry, everybody. I was practicing my uh, 70s four on the floor dance moves. Didn't think the camera was going to come on. How's everybody doing? My name's Chris Wells. Welcome to our 2021 USPS promotions. It is the funky 70s, emerging and advanced technologies and prints. So happy to have you all here. Hope you enjoyed a little good times music and dancing uh, to start your afternoon off uh, in a good way. So uh, thanks again for joining. All right, so let's get to it. If you've missed the 2021 overview or Tactile Century and Interactive, all the webinars are available at dsguw.com slash webinars. So you can check them all out there. All right, so let's get right into it. Emerging Advanced Technologies. Again, the United States Postal Service runs these promotions. There's six of them. They do it to encourage direct mail. So in each one, they're offering some sort of a postage discount or a credit, which is cool. However, what we found and what I hope you'll see today is that by utilizing these techniques, you can have a, a fairly significant impact on the return on investment you're getting in your direct mail. That's one. Number two is that a lot of the uh, techniques in the Emerging Advanced Technologies uh, section are all about conversion from direct mail to a digital experience. So as marketers, most of us know um, that phone calling, live phone calling and direct mail have two of the highest response rates. Uh, they're also two of the most expensive ways to communicate to our customers and prospects. Ideally, what we'd like to do is utilize that, uh, kind of capture that power of direct mail and then convert to a digital experience. Uh, because as marketers, it's easier for us to data mine and do some more customization that way. These techniques are gonna show you how to do that in some pretty cool, uh, some very inexpensive and some fairly expensive ways. I'll try to point out the expensive ones and not as we go through. So what are the key elements of this program? First of all, this is uh, applies to just about every mail class, right? First class, pre-sort, marketing mail, or non-profit. Non Campaign kicked off last week. It's a long one. It goes from March 1st all the way to August 31st. So you have plenty of time. Has to meet these criteria. One, prominent use of one of the identified emerging technologies. You're gonna learn about all of them today. Second, uh, directional copy on how to use the technology. You know, if there's an app to download, scan a QR code, whatever. Seems common sense, but third, any of your website's landing pages, uh, expanded reality experiences, all have to be relevant to your direct mail piece, all right? As, you know, we're stewards of the brand, right? We're gonna do that anyways. Um, fourth, anything that you're doing from a mobile device, which is 99% of these, uh, they need to be mobile optimized uh, websites and landing pages, again. That's what we do. Uh, and then finally, submission to the Emerging Technologies Promotional Office no later than a week prior to the first mailing for approval. We'll ask you to give us um, at least artwork and kind of the, con the assets of this about a week before you're gonna mail, uh, just to make sure that everything's approved. It takes them a couple of days to approve it. You do all that, 2% discount on the poster trait, cha-cha-cha, saving money, we like that. What are the key dates? Well, I just went over them, but the registration period, which is somewhat irrelevant, it started January 15th, but it only takes a week to get these things approved. So it goes all the way through basically the week before the last uh, date of mailing, which is August 31st. Again, we're right in the promotion now, all the way through the end of the summer, and uh, make sure you give us a week to submit this to the uh, post office. Now, the important stuff, what are the examples? Well, there are five main categories. Uh, most of them, actually all of them, except for the last two, have some subcategories attached to them. So I'm going to go through each one of them and kind of go through the uh, subcategories as well. And the first one, which is really the, um, the most involved, is expanded reality. One of the things I decided to do this year was give you guys some definitions. Uh, there's a lot of terminology being thrown around around virtual reality, augmented reality. 
And uh, a lot of that is uh, kind of uh, miscategorization of certain uh, certain technologies. So we have a main technology category called expanded reality. And then all of these virtual reality, augmented, enhanced, augmented, and mixed are all subcategories of that. When I talk about expanded reality experiences, I'm going to use some terms that I just want to review with you. One is called marker. So what a marker is, it's an image or a symbol that is recognized by either an app, if you have the user download an app to uh, get engaged in the expanded reality experience, or a lot of expanded reality now is done through a web browser, so you don't need an app, which is really good because apps kind of lower the uh, response rate. Um, so again, it's an image or a symbol that when it's recognized, that will launch the expanded reality experience. And again, we have two different types of expanded reality, app-based, which means we're asking our users to either download an app or we've built in an app into an existing app. So say you're you're hosting a trade show or you're a college and university or somebody's got a um your financial institution and they they already you already have an app that people utilize to manage their account you can actually build the um the, the expanded reality app right into your app so as long as they're in that it'll work um but anyways you need an app uh, and then the second is web er so web er there's no application required it can be launched by a, a qr code which are very popular now you don't need apps to do those so that's cool near field communication which i'm going to talk about in one of the categories as well as a bluetooth connection there's other ways to launch them as well so let's start with virtual reality right virtual reality these are those goggles that kids are getting now to play games and they run into the lamp post and everything else but the idea behind virtual reality is it actually transports the user into a completely new reality. There's no mixing with the real world around us. It just kind of, bang, immerses you. So one of the most popular ways we've seen to utilize this from a direct mail standpoint or a direct response standpoint are these Google Cardboard goggles. So you can kind of see an example of some that we did. They're super easy to use. They're, they assemble, they mail well, they mail flat, which is really neat. You stick your phone in the back there, you put that flap over there, you put it up to your uh, eyes, scan the QR code with your phone first, that launches the experience. These ones came with a strap, it was way too tight for my big head, uh, but I could just walk around with them like this. And what you see is a 360 kind of immerse yourself in an experience. So this is actually one we did for our open house at our new facility, which we wanted to do live, but for obvious reasons we weren't able to. So we did this virtual reality experience and sent these goggles out. And as you, the cool thing with virtual reality goggles is that when you look at certain things, like if I look at that little teardrop, it brings me right into the next room. So I can kind of go through and explore a facility or nature or whatever. So kind of a neat way to do it. The other way to do it, which we've been uh, done as well, is our calendar this year, um, which is all these kind of cool scenes. There's a QR code, and when you scan the QR code, it opens up the virtual reality experience just on your phone. So it takes that one image that you see on the calendar and kind of puts you in this 360 degree view of everything that's happening around that scene. And we've hidden some cool things in there like the guy ice fishing and stuff like that if you look around. So anyways, that's virtual reality. It, it completely immerses the end user into a different world. Pretty cool stuff. Then you get into augmented reality. Well, simple augmented reality is normally marker based. It's basically going to take a static image or symbol that's on a printed page, direct mail, what have you, and it's gonna make it more interactive or add content to it. So in the example you see on your, on your right there, it's a skiing trail map. And when I hold my phone over it, I can interact with that, see what trails are open, what the conditions are, things like that. Um, it's really good, like in this example, if you have, uh, you know, this is for a property, so this is a postcard, but we put it in a little book, um, that can play a video to really give the user more of an experience. But this is marker-based, so the whole experience is linked to that marker. So as I move the page around, the experience, the enhanced reality experience follows it. Uh, same thing with, uh, with, with, with this. This is kind of a neat way to, to, to utilize augmented reality and some interaction. If you were in the tactile sensory, you saw some of this presented then, but this was a piece for WPI in, uh, here in Massachusetts. And they sent seniors in high school a little goat they could punch out, that's their mascot, and kind of build a three-dimensional goat, you know, dress them up with certain clothes. And the pedestal of the goat uh, where it says WPI was actually the marker. So when the phone scanned the marker, they could go and change the different filters and then there was an instant screen capture and share to social media, which as marketers, that's what we want, right? This is what we want the end result of our marketing to be is people tagging it on social media. That's awesome. They also did a map for sophomores. And if you zoomed in on the map with the uh, AR experience, you could have a video play, you could explore more options. They did a wheel 
kind of for sophomores uh, where they, they could zoom in again, explore majors and minors. So if you have a concept or a product that you don't want to put so many words on your direct mail piece because you know that's kind of counter uh, what we want to do as marketers, um, but you need to explain it, augmented reality is a great way to do it. It enriches the experience of the user. And again, think about doing this without an app. So it's just using a browser to launch. Then we have enhanced augmented reality. What enhanced augmented reality does is it brings that dynamic content into the real world space, right? So now we're starting to uh, come off of usually a marker, but into a three dimensional space. So you can see something like this piece uh, where a tree kind of grows out of this little four panel direct mailer, self mailer. The tap to RSVP button you just saw is also augmented reality. That's not actually printed on the piece. As I move it around, it moves. You can zoom right in, pretty cool artwork there. Um, and then you can see when I open it up, it goes away because it loses its marker and it loses its bearing. So that's kind of how that works. They do have web-based uh, marker augmented reality now. So that's what you're seeing here. You can see the tracking's not quite as good as when you're actually downloading an app, but you'll get a much better response without asking someone to download an app first. And it still works. You can see clearly there's a spaceman coming off of the postcard, which is cool. And again, when you get these things, you share it with other people, and that's really what our goal is, right? Let's get people to interact with our pieces. That's gonna enhance the experience, that's gonna cause uh, brand recognition, and hopefully a direct response to buy our product or service, which is what we're looking to do. Then we have mixed reality. So this is the uh, kind of piece de resistance of uh, expanded reality. Um, what uh, mixed reality is, is it combines your real world with items and uh, and experiences in the virtual world. So it's usually use, utilizing some sort of geospatial features of the of the phone itself, um, so that you can actually see things that don't exist. So it's it's that's why they call it mixed mixed reality. So the one on the left, if you remember Pokemon Go, I think people still play that. When you go around and hunt these little Pokemon, and they just kind of show up in the street, and hopefully not in the middle of the street, um, and you could go catch them. And IKEA is using this for furniture. You know, if you have a chair you like on their website and you want to see if it fits in your room, you can use this mixed mode augmented reality to uh, to, to actually view what it, what it looks like. If you responded to this webinar use from our direct mail piece, you actually used mixed mode augmented reality and it was web AR. You didn't have to download an app. What we asked you to do was scan the uh, little poster QR code above the lava lamp. And when you did, it actually transported you inside of the lava lamp. So I scanned the QR code with my phone. It launches the augmented reality experience. And basically this is in my office. I'm kind of trapped in this lava lamp with all these bubbles. We hid the registration bubble, so you kind of had to look around for it a little bit where it said tap to register. And if you found it, you'd hit there and it would bring you right to the registration site. And just to prove that this is mixed mode, I actually turned the phone around. There I am. See, I put my face in it. So again, mixed reality is 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 really uh, kind of a neat way to bring the real world and the virtual world together. And again, it can be done with a web-based browser. You don't need an app. None of these things are very expensive to do. The most expensive part normally is if you don't have the content already built, it's building the content, you know, building a video or or the animation or something like that. Uh, even animation is not that bad. But the other thing that's great about augmented reality or any kind of enhanced reality experience is that because we're utilizing mobile devices, there's a ton of information, as we know, about where we are and who we are when we scan things with our phone. So we can get scans and we can actually uh, kind of locate them on a map and we can tell you where people were when they hit these things. Um, also response rates, absolutely phenomenal off the charts, especially with web AR because um, people don't have to download the app and it becomes shareable. Most of the time when we have had customers use web-based augmented reality or we do it ourselves, we get hits from people we know we didn't send um, pieces to and that's because they share it. So uh, there you go, expanded reality. The next one is integration. There's really three categories. The first one is kind of a neat concept. It's called personalized addressable television. And you may or may not know this, but when we're watching television, whether through our local cable provider or streaming, uh, marketers have the ability to customize the commercials that we see based on uh, you know, demographic information. So you and I could be watching the same show tonight and I could get a different series of commercials than 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 you can. Um, so I look at this as a really neat way to do omni-channel if you're already advertising on television. If you don't advertise on television, 
uh, that's a big investment, okay? But let's say you already are. Um, you could combine this with informed delivery, which is our sixth webinar, but basically it's you get an email from the post office every morning with uh, what you're getting in your mailbox and it can become interactive with call to action. So you could do a direct mail campaign. That morning as a potential consumer of yours, I could get an email with an offer and some information about you. That afternoon I come home from work, in my mailbox is your direct mail piece, then I sit down at night to watch my television, and bang, there's a commercial. Spaced repetition, right? We learned this in marketing school way back when, it works really well. So that's addressable television. The second one uh, in integration is called direct to digital. So this has been around for a while, but um, uh, and it can be a little bit complicated to implement, but it's just one of the ones that qualifies, so I, I, I do want to talk about it. Uh, basically, this is uh, automating a direct mail from a some other electronic uh, trigger, whether it's a, a desktop or mobile interaction from an online inquiry, social media ad, um, Google ad, any kind of um, electronic um, advertising that you're doing. And it, what, the way the program works is you look at the inquiry or the click, you do a device ID mapping back to that device to get the address, and then you send a customized piece of direct mail. You do that, you'll get the 2% uh, discount. And then finally, near field communication, which is one of my favorites in terms of integration. So near field communication is basically like an RFID chip, but it's much lower powered um, and much smaller. And what it does is it's like Apple Pay. So when you bring your phone close to an Apple Pay device, it recognizes it's there, it pops you up to pay. That's what near field communication is. So you can get little stickers that you can program, but they also are now manufacturing paper that has the near field communication microchip built into it. So you could literally order skids of stock that is already pre-programmed for either an augmented reality experience, to launch to a website, to schedule an appointment, whatever you want, and you just print the way you normally would and mail it. So we actually did this with a postcard. I'll show you the video. Um, on the back, we just used um, the communication chips, near field communication chips that we just programmed and stuck on there. We were doing a fairly small mailing, it was about 3,000 pieces. And then as the phone gets close to it, it launches you into what we did was an augmented reality experience, a mixed mode augmented reality. So it transported you into kind of having all these little spring creatures living in wherever room you were in. And there was a registration sign on there that you could register for um, a webinar as well. So near field communication, pretty cool. Video and print, um, this has been around for a while, integrated screens, they do have some neat little um, formats now, you can see the one in the bottom left is kind of like a pullout, so you can get some more interaction that way. We used, uh, kind of made a joke of it, we did a VCR tape, this was a while ago, nobody knows what those are anymore. Um, the other thing you can do with integrated screens though, is if you don't want to spend the money on those um, video mailers, you could actually use a marker and have it be a box, an empty box with a marker that plays the video through the phone using web AR, just save yourself 50 bucks a piece. Uh, this this kind of integrated video really never took off, but I still show it. It's basically putting, you can put like a, a mobile device behind a translucently printed ad and it kind of enhances it by playing videos and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm not really excited about it, but it exists. Personalized interactive video, we've probably all been exposed to that. You know, you can use a personalized URL or, or, or some other form that someone fills out to customize the video to them. And then the same thing with shoppable video. So if you're in the retail space and if you launch an experience and it brings a QR code or something like that, near field communication, and it allows the user to watch a video and kind of shop through the video by clicking on, you know, the models or whatever, that would also qualify for emerging and advanced technology. Bluetooth is really more of a retail type of application, but again, it's part of the program. The way this normally works is you would do a direct mail piece to your customer saying, if you come into our stores and download our app, as you walk through the store, we will have Bluetooth transmitters that will send very special deals only to you. Um, so that's kind of how that works. So you put these little Bluetooth transmitters through. Again, this isn't the cheapest one, right? You got to buy the transmitters and everything else. The one I'm most excited about, uh, which last couple, last year they added this to the program, and last year my entire presentation was the top part of that so slide, which is how do you interact with a digital assistant? And the thing with digital assistants, this is your Alexa or your Google Home, is that people marketers haven't really figured out how to monetize them yet. And if you think back to the early days of the internet, it was a tool. It wasn't being monetized, there was no ads, anything like that, it was a tool to look up things, to research, whatever. And then marketers figured out, ah, we can monetize this and we can actually promote our businesses. That's where digital assistants are now. They're being utilized as a tool, but nobody's gotten really good at figuring out how to monetize that tool. And we think that this is a solution uh, that's just 
it's a, it's a problem that's ready for, ready, ripe for a solution. So we partnered with a company called Voiceify, cool company right in Boston. And what they do is they build voice experiences for um, Amazon Echoes and Google Home. And what we were able to do is figure out that if you if I'm sending a digital communication to you, I'm not going to say a command to my digital assistant. I'm just going to click on whatever the digital communication is. I'm not going to get an email from you that says, you know, you can click here to buy this or talk to your assistant. No, but with direct mail, I can capture somebody's attention at the point of looking at it. And that's where I can build a series of voice commands to actually get them in. So I'm gonna show you a quick video right now of how we envision this working. Again, this is brand new, hot off the press. Alexa, ask GBH about the spring campaign. This spring's campaign is focused on helping teachers and families, as well as covering racism and educational programs. We're currently accepting donations for our spring drive. You can offer a donation of $20, $50, or $100. Which amount is right for you? Let me donate $100. $100 is so generous. Thank you so much. I will have Alexa process the donation with your Amazon Pay account. Here she is. To confirm, you want to process a $100 donation to GBH using Amazon Pay? Yes. I've processed your $100 donation with Amazon Pay. You will receive a receipt to your email for your tax records. Your donation is appreciated and we are thrilled to count you as a member of the GBH community. Would you like to listen to GBH Live now? So again, don't think of it as only donations. If somebody has an Echo Show, you could integrate this to have it go to their website or whatever. They don't even have to open your direct mail piece. You put the command right on the front. So, all right, there you go. Emerging and advanced technologies. Hope you guys all got something. I'm gonna leave you with some more 70s music. You can hang out as long as you want and listen to it. It's not the disco part. It's uh, my other favorite part, which is uh, the rock and roll part. So have a great day, everybody. And thanks so much for uh, for joining us.